the system bus connects the system components together so we can say that it is a shared communication link so all the units of the system it might be the cpu the main memory the keyboard the secondary storage the monitors the network lines so all of these they are connected together for communication through the system bus this system bus uses a set of wires to connect all these multiple subsystems so what exactly is bus arbitration this refers to the process of resolving conflicts that arise when multiple devices attempt to access the bus at the same time so let's say the main memory wants to use the system bus and let's say the secondary storage also wants to use the system bus so out of these two devices or there could be other devices as well which might want to use the bus so to resolve this conflict that which unit or which subsystem will be given the bus first is referred to as the process of bus arbitration and when multiple devices if they try to use the bus simultaneously this can lead to data corruption and instability in the system so the bus arbitration mechanism it is used to ensure that only one device has access to the bus the main types of bus arbitration methods include the centralized method where there is a single device which is known as the bus arbiter and this unit is responsible for managing the access to the bus or we might have a distributed system where the devices they compete for access to the bus by sending a request signal and waiting for a grant signal there is no single device over here which is managing the bus in the centralized one single device will be responsible for managing the bus the bus master is referred to that device that has access to a bus at an instance or a device that initiates data transfers on the bus now the bus arbitration will hand over the bus to one device which will be using that bus for data transfer this device is then referred to as the bus master any one controller or processor can be the bus master at a given instance and the next device can take control of the bus only after the current master relinquishes control of the bus so whichever device is using the bus currently is referred to as the bus master and once it has finished using the bus then only the next device can take control so what are the applications in shared memory systems multiple devices need to access the memory to read or write data so the bus arbitration will allow these different devices to access the memory without interfering with each other in multi processor systems multiple processors they need to communicate with each other to share data and coordinate the processing again bus arbitration will allow the processors to share access to bus to communicate with each other and with the shared memory input output devices also need to communicate with the processor to exchange data so in this case also bus arbitration will allow the input output devices to share the access to the bus to communicate with the processor and the memory a bus master who wants to use the bus will assert a signal known as the bus request so any device which wants to use the bus will send a bus request signal the bus master cannot use the bus until its request is granted so only when the bus arbitration process it grants the request of that device then till then the bus master cannot use the bus after using the bus the bus master must signal to the arbiter that it has finished using the bus so the bus arbitration schemes usually try to balance two factors one is priority 
that means the highest priority device should be serviced first and should be allowed to use the bus first. Second is fairness that even the lowest priority device should never be completely locked out from using the bus. So these two factors need to be taken care of in the bus arbitration process. In centralized arbitration, there is a single bus arbiter which performs the required arbitration. It is this device which will decide which device will become the bus master. So there is a separate bus arbitration circuitry which is connected to the bus. Usually the processor is the bus master unless it grants the bus mastership to the direct memory access controller. In centralized arbitration, there can be three types of arbitration schemes, daisy chaining, polling, fixed priority or the independent request method. So first let's discuss the daisy chain method. Here the bus control passes from one bus master to the next one and so on. So let's say there are multiple devices, device 1, device 2 till device n. So there are n devices and all of them can send a request signal on this bus request. Once the bus arbiter sees that there is a request signal, it will check whether the bus is busy or not. Only if the bus is not busy, the bus arbiter will send the bus grant signal. This bus grant signal passes through one device to the next device and so on. So this is why it is referred to as a daisy chain. So you can see that device 1 will always has the highest priority since it gets the bus grant signal first. So device 1 will check whether it had requested the bus or not. If it has not requested it will pass on the signal to device 2 and so on till the time which it reaches this bus grant signal reaches the device which had requested for the bus. In case multiple devices had requested for the bus, then whichever device is closer to the bus arbiter will get the bus because this bus grant signal is daisy chained through the devices. So what are the advantages? This is a simple and a scalable system. Scalable because more devices can be added to the system. They can be added along the chain up to a certain maximum value. The disadvantage is that the value of the priority assigned to a device depends on its position. If it is closer to the bus arbiter, it will have higher priority also there is propagation delay, this bus grant signal till the time it reaches a device further down this chain, there will be a lot of time that will be required to go through all the devices which are earlier than it. Also another dis disadvantage is that any of the device which fails, this might cause problem in the bus arbitration because this bus grant signal will not be propagated further. In the polling or rotating priority scheme, this bus arbiter will use to generate addresses for the master which will be a unique priority. So there will be a sequence of master addresses generated. As we can see there is one busy bus uh, request line, bus busy line to which all the devices are connected and a bus request line but the number of bus grant addresses these lines, they will decide how many devices can be added. So if there are three lines over here, that means two to the power of three, eight devices can be added over here. And then the bus arbiter will generate these addresses. So if we have 16 devices, which can which are connected then we need at least four grant lines over here. So whenever the arbiter generates the sequence of addresses and the 
master recognizes its address, it will activate the busy line and it will begin to use the bus. The number of address lines will depend on the number of masters which are connected. The advantage is that it does not favor any particular device. It generates a sequence of master addresses and whichever address is generated first, that device gets to use the bus. So there is no favoring of any particular device and this is also a simple arbitration method. The disadvantage is that adding bus masters is difficult because that would result in the increase in the number of address line and again as with the da daisy chain if one device fails then the entire system will not stop working over here. In the daisy chain method if one device failed then the bus grant was not propagated further. In this system since there are separate bus grant address lines, even if one device fails, the bus grant lines are active. The third arbitration method in centralized arbitration is the fixed priority or the independent request method. Here, each device is connected to individual bus request and bus grant lines. Like say device 2, it is connected to its own bus request and its own bus grant line. So the arbiter knows exactly which master has requested the bus and the bus is granted to that master. Here the, the priorities of all these devices are predefined. So if there are two devices which are requesting for bus, let's say device 2 and device 5 have requested and let's say device 5 has a higher priority, then the grant signal will be generated for that particular device. So in case of simultaneous bus request, the bus will always be granted to the device with a higher priority. The advantages are that it is a fast arbitration scheme and the speed is independent of the number of connected devices because each device is, is ha device is having its own request and grant line. The disadvantage is that more number of control lines are required and connecting large number of bus masters becomes difficult. After the centralized bus arbitration, let us discuss the distributed bus arbitration. Here, there is not one single bus arbiter which is deciding the control of the bus. Here all the devices will participate in the selection of the next bus master. There is no central arbiter over here. Each device is assigned a 4-bit identification number or the ID. All devices are connected to 5 lines. Four lines are used to transmit its ID and one line is used for the start arbitration signal. So let's say this is the interface circuit for device A and here was device A. And let's say the ID for device A is 0101. So there are four lines over here which are being used to transmit the ID for this device and there is one line which is the start arbitration line. So this interface circuit for device A will transmit the ID of the device to the bus system. So one or more devices if they want to use the request they do so by asserting the start arbitration signal. So any device which wants to use the bus will send this signal on the start arbitration line and it will place its ID on the four open collector lines ARB0 to ARB3. So the address or the ID will be the four bit ID will be placed on these lines. And if multiple devices are requesting the bus but only one device will be selected, 
using the code on lines and the one with the highest ID. This is a reliable system as it does not depend on any one device to do the bus arbitration. Let's take an example of in this case. So let's say we have a device A which has ID 50101 and let's say we have a device B which has ID 6 which is 0110. So device A has sent its ID over here 0101. Similarly, the interface circuit of device B will also send its ID on all these line and it will send 0110. What will happen is a or these open collector lines, they will do a logical OR of these IDs. And if we do the logical OR, we get 1 with 0 is 1, 0 with 1 is 1, 1 with 1 is 1 and 0 with 0 is 0. So the logical OR of these two IDs is 0, 1, 1, 1. So this will be sent by these collector lines back to the interface circuit. So 0, 1, 1, 1 will be sent to the interface circuit for device A and similarly 0, 1, 1, 1 will be sent to device B as well. So device A the ID was this, device B the ID was this and the logical OR has this value. So what will happen is these two IDs will be now compared. So if you see what will happen, device A will compare this with its ID and wherever they are same. So 0 was similar with 0, 1 was similar with 1, so 0 and 1 are similar. But the, this bit 0 and 1, they are not similar. So the first bit where it becomes dissimilar, they will all be replaced by zeros after that. So device A will see 0, 1, 0, 0 on comparison. Let's say what will happen with comparing with device B ID. So this is the ID of device B. This is what the logical OR has been sent back to the interface circuit for device B. Let's start comparing. So 0 and 0, they are same. So this is 0. 1 and 1, they are same. So this is 1. 1 and 1 are again same. So this is 1. 0 and 1 are different. So this is being replaced by 0. So now the device A will send 0, 1, 0, 0 to the arbitration line and device B will send 0, 1, 1, 0 to the arbitration line. And since when we compare these two, since this ID is higher, 0, 1, 1, 0 is higher, device B will be given control. So this is how a distributed bus arbitration system works.